So another nice thing about reflections is that they work very, very well in the corner plane. And this is nice because we're just coming off of this idea of the corner plane like this. So let's look at this point A, B. I want to call this one here K. And now we can reflect K over specific lines here. So for instance, one thing we can say is that we want to, if we want to reflect this point K over, let's say, the X axis. Right? Now, according to our definition here, if you think about what's going on, our definition tells us that k prime is going to be in a position such that k to k x, the x axis, which is our mirror, is the perpendicular bisector of k to k prime. Now, note that x is a x axis is a horizontal line here, so that means it's got to be perpendicular. So we're going to create a vertical line like this. So there's going to be a vertical line like this here. So we want to make sure that k prime is going to be somewhere down here. If it's a vertical line here, we know that if it's a vertical line, the x-coordinate doesn't change, right? So we know that the x-coordinate is going to be a here. Now, we also want this to be the same, so we want these distances to be exactly the same here. Now, wait a minute. The nice part about this is that since it's vertical, this is b units up here. This is b over here, so this is going to be b down here. But now we're going in the opposite direction. This is going to be a negative b. So it makes sense here that if I have my point a comma b and I reflect it over the x-axis here, we know that this is going to be a comma negative b, right? That's going to be important here. Okay? And you note that we can actually do this in the same direction. We can actually do this in the same thing. We're reflecting over the y-axis here, right? Same sort of argument here. This is a vertical line, so therefore the line that joins k to k, its image, k prime, is going to be a horizontal line here. Whoops, sorry about that, folks. Right? And we want to make these distances exactly the same yet again. So it's going to be a horizontal line. Here's going to be our image, k prime. Uh, now it's a horizontal line, that means the y coordinate doesn't change, so we have end up with b here. And now we can reflect over this point here, a, there's a units like this, so it's going to be a units like this over here, and we end up with a negative a here. So we note that in this situation, a reflection over the y-axis of a comma b should be negative a comma b, right? So all we're doing is sticking negative signs in front of it. Now, there is one more thing I really want to focus on here. And that's the idea of what happens if we were to reflect over another line here. Okay, so again, we'll do our sketch. Here's our point K yet again. But this time, I want to reflect, I want to reflect over the line Y equals X. So what should that be? That we're not sure about. But let's, let's take a look at this here. Now this line is the mirror line, Y equals X. We know a lot about that line. That line has a slope of 1 and has a y-intercept of 0. So that means our line is going to look something like this here. So I'm going to sketch our line like so. So this is the line y equals x. So we note that in this situation here, according to our definition, k prime is going to be somewhere across the line here. Since a and b, you know, so k prime is going to be somewhere across the line here, and we want it such that this line y equals x is the perpendicular bisector of k to k prime. Therefore, k prime is going to be somewhere over here. Now, I have no idea what these coordinates are, but we can try to determine what they are here. And indeed, if we were to draw k to k prime here, this, this here, we want to make sure that this here is a perpendicular bisector, which means that this point here, I'm going to call it m, this point needs to be the perpendicular, needs to be the midpoint of k to k prime. So we know a couple things about this here. We know in this case, we know that m is the midpoint of kk prime, okay? So now, let's take a look at what's going on here. Maybe we can figure out what's happening. So let me extend this here, because we know a lot about lines. So I'm gonna extend the line like so in both directions. Now, we know that in this situation here, this has a slope of one, right? I'd like to figure out where m is, because if I know the coordinates of point m, then I can just use the midpoint formula to figure out the location of point K. Great. Problem is I don't know where point M is. But I do know that the slope of this line is 1. And we know that this line, KK prime, right? We know that in this situation, KK prime, this line here, in fact, is perpendicular to Y equals X. Now, if it's perpendicular to Y equals X, that actually helps us out a lot, because we know this has a slope of 1. So the slope here is going to be something... And that is going to be negative 1 divided by 1, right? Because we know that perpendicular lines, the slopes, the product of the slopes is negative 1. And that is going to be negative 1 here. So this is going to be really helpful. This has a slope of negative 1 here. 
Okay, so now we have an idea. Since this has a slope of negative 1, and we can only pass it to the point a, comma b, maybe we can use that to our advantage. We can figure out what kk prime looks like, right? So if I can figure out the equation of kk prime, that's great, because I know the slope is 1. So the slope, we know that the slope is negative 1, and we know that it passes through a, b. So now we can use point slope form. So let's go ahead and write this out. We can use the point slope form. So it's going to be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This line here, we know pass through a, b, so it's going to be y minus b equals negative 1 times x minus a here. So we can go ahead and set this up. We get y minus b equals what appears to be negative x plus a, so y equals negative x plus a plus b. Fascinating. So now we know the equation of this green line here. So how do we use that to find m? Well, wait a minute. This point m is on the line y equals x, and it's also on the green line y equals negative x plus a plus b. So if it's on both at the same time, that means it must satisfy both equations. So we know that the line, the point m is on here, and it's also on the line y equals x. So now I've got a system I can solve here, right? So let's go ahead and set that up. Now let's use our system here. So our system here is going to be y equals negative x plus a plus b, and y equals x here. So we can set them equal to each other because they're both equal to y. We can set that here. So you get x equals negative x plus a plus b. So that means 2x equals a plus b, and therefore x is a plus b over 2. Oh, well, that's really nice. And the nice part about this is that since y is equal to x, that's also y as well. So that's really important here because now that gives us the location of point M. This is a plus b over 2, comma a plus b over 2. Right? This here now in our picture, we now have this, that in this situation, we have this sort of thing here where a plus b over 2, a plus b over 2. And now we can now solve for k prime because we know M, now let's go back here, M is going to be the midpoint here. Now the nice part about this is that we know that the coordinates of m, that's a plus b over 2, comma a plus b over 2, and that's going to be, so let's go back at our thing here. So now we don't know what this is, let's call this x2, y2, so it's going to be a plus x2 over 2, b plus y2 over, oh, sorry, over 2. And now we can set these, you know, equal to each other like this. So it's pretty clear here from this, x2 is going to be equal to b, right? Because this is a plus b over 2, and this is a plus x2 over 2. Here we have a plus b over 2. Here's the b matches with that, so therefore we know y2 should be equal to a. So that tells us that this coordinate here, this point, is going to be b comma a, which is just the first coordinate swapped. Okay, but note that I basically went through this entire reason, the entire thing here, to show that it actually has to be swapped. So therefore, in review, what we can say is like this here. We can say from this that if we're reflecting a point over the x-axis here, we're going to end up at uh, we're going to negate the y coordinate, so it's going to be a comma negative b. If we reflect over the y-axis, we're going to refl uh, flip the x coordinate here, so it's going to be negative a comma b. And if we're reflecting over the line y equals x. We're actually going to flip the uh, uh, rearrange the order. We're going to reverse the order of the coordinates, and we end up with b comma a here.